we've come a long way and we've not actually done anything specifically relating to the user making a payment yet but in this part we're actually going to be setting everything up so the pricing uh, the currency uh, the intent the payment method which is obviously going to be paypal and then we're going to forward the user off to paypal and then make sure uh, that we're redirected back to the right pages so what we need to do then is create a file that actually handles all this for us sets everything up and then redirects the user off this is quite a long file but most of it is very self-explanatory and can be easily extended on if you need to perhaps add additional items if you're maybe building some kind of shopping cart anything like that so i'm going to create a folder within here this probably wouldn't be ideal for a production environment you'd have some kind of routing set up but let's create a member folder which is going to handle both the file that allows us to um, show that the transaction is completed and actually sends us off to um, PayPal as well. So we're going to create a new file in here then, and this is going to be called payment.php. And from our index file, this is where we're going to redirect the user. So member payment.php. So we're going to send the user to this when they want to make a payment. So this is obviously a PHP file we need to require in our start file so we can actually make use of the API. So let's require this in, in source start.php, and we can actually start to write the code here. So let's set up or, or create new instances of the uh, classes that we need to be able to do this. And I'll try and explain each one as we go along. The first one is the payer, which is essentially the, the payer. It's pretty straightforward we only really need to call uh, one method on this so this is a new payer now this is namespaced as well so we're going to actually have to do a lot of imports at the top here this is namespaced under PayPal API payer so the next one then is the details again fairly straightforward we just uh, create an instance of that this is going to be PayPal API details. Again, pretty straightforward. The next is the amount. Again, this is very self-explanatory, like so. And again, we need to go ahead and import this. And that's under API amount. Then we have a transaction. Now the transaction is basically uh, setting the overall amount and setting the description. So the amount is things like the currency, the total, etc. And then we pass in the details, which is stuff like the shipping, the tax and the subtotal. It does seem a little bit confusing, but it does offer the flexibility that you need to build these up properly. So again, this is namespaced under PayPal API and it's just transaction. So then we actually have the payment new payment and these might all seem pretty uh, similar but the payment allows us to set the intent which is going to be a sale then it allows us to set the payer which we've already set up and then the actual transactions as well so we pass everything into this so uh, again this is going to be under PayPal API payment and then we have something a little bit more interesting which is the redirect URLs so the redirect URLs allow us to specify the success URL so or the return URL. So when the user actually logs in, we uh, send the user back with um, a proved true or something. And that allows us to then detect in the file that we're redirected back to that the payment's been approved and then, or, or at least we've come back successfully and then we can go ahead and log everything that we need to. So. Again, let's import this under redirect URLs. So let's go ahead and use each of these then to actually set everything up that we need. And again, like I've said, this can be modified heavily depending on your requirements. So you can go ahead and look this up in the documentation to actually uh, change this if you need to in any way. So first of all, payer then. We need to set payment method. 
So this is a method that takes an argument here. In this case, it's going to be PayPal. The reason we have to do this is because you can actually set up card payments. You don't actually have to go through PayPal to do this. So let's just uh, comment this as payer. The next thing is going to be the details. So the details are things like setting the shipping. So for example, we can set the shipping to two pounds or two dollars, depending on the currency that we'll set in a moment. We can also set the tax on this. In my case, it's just going to be nothing. And we can set the subtotal as well, which is going to be 20 pounds. This is going to be the fee for membership. So next then is the amount. So again, you'll see how this all comes together. So the amount then we're interested in setting the currency. That's really important. In my case, it's going to be GBP. In your case, it may well be another currency. And then we set the actual total. So the total is the shipping plus the tax plus any anything else you set here and then the subtotal. So the total then is 22 pounds. If none of this matches, you will get an error. So you need to make sure these all actually add up. Doing this would obviously be done maybe dynamically if you were actually adding things up, it's probably a really good idea. And then what we want to do is apply the details to this that we set up here. So we're setting this and then passing it through into this set details method. So next then is the transaction. So the transaction then is going to be setting the actual amount of the sale and the description. So this is what's going to show up when you redirect your user to PayPal that they see on the left hand menu. So here then transaction, we want to set the overall amount, which is we've already calculated under amount. So we just pass that object in and then we set the description. So in here, I'll just put membership. So now what we want to do is set the payment. So payment equals, uh, sorry, payment set intent. The intent of this is a sale. You can have other things like um, setting a payment that comes out a little bit later or at least authorizes something, but this is all in the documentation so you can check that out. And then we need to set the payer, which remember we set up here. So we pass in the payer object and then we set the transactions, which again, we set up here. This is an array of lots of different transactions. So this could be, for example, lots of different items that you're adding in. And again, this could be as dynamic as you want it to be. So this is transaction. Now we need to define how the, let's just comment this actually, payment. Now we need to define how the redirect URLs work. So redirect URLs. The first thing we want to do is set the return URL. This is the URL that we're returned to on success or when at least the user signed in successfully and has completed this. So this is going to be our domain name. In my case, I'm working locally. So it's going to be this. And then we need to choose a file that we're directed to. So I'm going to have a folder called PayPal. I'm going to have a file in that called pay.php. And then I'm going to set approved equals true. And that's just going to allow me to do a quick if statement to see if this has been approved or not. But these files can be completely different. So if we set the next one, so set cancel the URL. This is the URL that the user is directed to if they cancel the payment or something like that. Now, in my case, what we're going to do is we're going to redirect to the same file because what we're going to be doing is still doing a little bit of, uh, of checking in there. Maybe it really depends. And in this case, all we're going to do is we're going to say much like we did for this approved false like so. So these can be anything you want, just do whatever makes sense within your application. So finally, we need to say payment, set redirect 
URLs, passing in the redirect URLs that we just specified. So that is pretty much it for actually setting everything up. Now what we can do is start to create a actual payment and then redirect the user. So let's just check so far whether we don't have any errors. That's really important. It looks here like everything's okay. So now what we want to do is, uh, like I said, set everything up. So we're going to wrap this in a try catch. And this just allow us to catch any exceptions that are thrown by the PayPal library or SDK. And the, pay uh, the exception that I'm going to catch here is a PayPal connection exception. I'm going to name that E. In this case, what I want to do is just do a header redirect to back a directory into PayPal and then error.php. We haven't created this file yet. We've not created this file yet either. So we'll do that within this PayPal directory. Let's quickly do that now so it's, uh, so it's done. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call that PayPal. And inside of here then, we're going to create error.php. And we'll just create a basic document here and say something went wrong. We'll copy this. We'll create a new file in here just so we've got it called success.php, which is going to be uh, when the user, uh, sorry, we should create a, let's just rename this to cancelled. This is going to be when the user cancels. So you cancelled. Obviously, you can be a little bit more creative than this and you wouldn't store it within files like this, really. It just doesn't make too much sense. And we're also then going to create that pay file. So pay.php. And in here, let's just echo out hello. So this is this pay.php file is where we redirected after we make a payment or cancel rather. So pay.php and pay.php. You could of course set the cancel URL directly to this cancelled file here. It's entirely up to you. Okay, so now we actually want to start creating a payment. Oh, and you might want to log an error here as well. So you might want to log something just so you can see what went wrong. But if you have uh, logging on, like we set up when we connected to the API inside of start.php, that might be enough. So all we want to do in here then is say payment create API. So we're using payment that we have here. We're creating a payment, passing in the API uh, that we set up a moment ago in start.php. And then that's going to um, kick the process off, if you like. Now, what we also need to do in a moment is do things like generate and store a hash. So generate and store a hash. That's going to go into our database. We also want to prepare and execute transaction storage. So that basically means storing record in here. And then once this is all done, once uh, we know that nothing in here has thrown an exception, down here, what we can do is actually redirect to, your, uh, to PayPal. So this is a little bit awkward because PayPal's payment object gives us a get links um, array back. So we can actually iterate over this. But for now, let's do a var dump on payment get links just to see what we're working with. So let's click become a member. We'll give that just a moment. And there we go. So that's um, actually created a transaction because we are not, not a transaction in our database, but that sort of kicked the process off um, with that create method. And in here, what we've now got is a an array of different links that we can do things with. Now, what we're interested in is this approval URL. We want to redirect a user to this URL in order for them to check out. So what we need to do is loop through these, 
check what the rel is. If the rel is approved URL, we want to grab this URL and redirect the user. It's not very difficult. We can just use a for each for this. So for each payment get links as link in here, a quick if statement to say if link get rel, we have a handy method for that is approval URL. Then in this case, we want to set the redirect URL to link and we have a handy get href method. So now if down here we do a var dump on redirect URL, you'll see that if we go back again, hit become a member. Oops, let's just check this out. Uh, we go semicolon. So if we refresh that, we should then see a string with that URL. Perfect. So now down here, all we need to do is redirect the user to that redirect URL. So now you'll start to see this come together. Let's just go back again, hit become a member. And with obviously without the user seeing anything on that page, because we're not outputting anything, that's going to redirect the user to our sandbox uh, account here with facilitators account test store. This obviously relates to your PayPal developer account because you've set that up passing in the tokens and you can now using the test account you would have set up in the PayPal dashboard, you can log in with this. So if we cancel and return to the test store, you'll notice that that's going to redirect us back to that pay.php file. Remember, we specified that in the redirect URLs when we set that up and we're seeing that hello that we echoed out earlier. Now, also, if we just go back one, if I go ahead and log in with the credentials with my test account and hit uh, and hit log in, that's going to give me the option to uh, confirm my payment. So when I hit continue, that's also going to send me back to pay.php, which we again specified. But this time we have some more information in here. So we've got the payment ID. You might recognize that for when we set this up, payment ID there. We've also got a token, which is useful as well. And we've also got approved equals true. So we've got this approved equals true. So we can do a little if statement. Uh, approved would have been false when we canceled the transaction. So now that we've actually set the uh, initial payment up, what we can now do is when we're returned back to the pay.php file, we can actually charge the user. Remember at this point they have not been charged even though they entered the correct credentials and hit pay. But the next video is going to be concerned with actually storing the information within the database. So we need to uh, create the transaction storing the payment ID, uh, generating the hash and, and uh, filling in this user ID. Not very complicated. We'll do that in the next video.